Hey friends, welcome, Megan here. I am going to show you a really fun uh, graphic design tutorial today. It is all about how to create a mock-up in perspective. A perspective mock-up is basically anything where you overlay um, something like, for instance, this computer mock-up where the computer is faced at an angle. It's not faced directly in front of you, so where it's a simple create an, an easy rectangle and just pop in an image over top of it. I'm going to teach you today how you can overlay um, a an image like maybe a website graphic or a screenshot or maybe a phone screenshot something like that or even something that you would want to pop in a frame like really the options are endless for what you can use this for um, but today we're going to teach you the concept of how to create a screen grab of your website and put it on a mock-up in perspective so just like the one you're looking at this was made for my client Rebecca Van we did a custom website design for her and to make some really fun graphics for her to show off her new website I wanted to use um, some of these images that Laura Foote, my dear, dear friend and amazing brand photographer, captured of her studio. And she got these gorgeous, gorgeous images of her studio. And a lot of the images of her desktop were in perspective to where the desk that the computer screen itself was not literally in front of your face. Um, it's a more natural shot, shot to capture something from an angle like this as it is to try to do a perfect um, flat image. It's just much more natural. People look at um, objects this way in normal life. So it's a really cool um, graphic to learn and it just makes your images online look a little bit more natural than like everything being um, perfectly in line and in front of your face. This is another example of what I did for Rebecca. This one was fun because she was actually in the shot. This What you see in the computer screen here is um, a snapshot from her about page. It's the story behind her brand and it was just a really, really beautiful um, part of her about page that came together. So I created this graphic for her of her looking at her about page and reading that storyline. Um, so what I'm going to show you today is how to make this. Um, this is a stock image from my collaboration with Laura Foote and the SC Stock Shop. We did a whole collaboration of lifestyle images similar to Rebecca's images. I styled Rebecca's images. Um, I love just styling gorgeous brand imagery, and we tried to bring that to life in a way that um, multiple people could use them with the lifestyle line at the SC Stock Shop. So I can show you. Real fast, you'll see here in our lifestyle line, we have tons of fun images similar to this concept. You'll see a lot of screens that are turned at an angle. And so what I want to show you today is how to use these lifestyle images and even any image that you have. If you have custom branding images, you can do the same exact concept. But um, this is something that you can learn, especially if you have our lifestyle images from the SC Stock Shop and you don't have a screen image, say, just like this, where it's a perfect and easy rectangle like that. So I'm going to show you how to do it. And I'm going to use a screenshot of my website since I love color and it matches with our colorful image we're working with. One thing I would tell you to do is if you have a bookmarks bar to go ahead and um, hide that bookmark bar. What you're going to do is get a screenshot. I know on my laptop I have a button that literally says print screen. Um, I honestly don't know what it is on a Mac because I don't have Mac. I have a PC. Um, so I'm going to get a screenshot. So however you would do that on your computer, go ahead and do it when you're ready. Hmm, I have a sliding image, so I'm waiting for the perfect thing. Um, I'm going to do it now. Okay. So once you have your image, you're going to pop back to Photoshop and open the image that you're going to overlay it on. So if you have one of our lifestyle images um, similar to this or whatever image that you have that you're going to overlay um, your screen grab onto, go ahead and open that up and let's learn how to make this fun graphic. So where we're going to start is by creating a rectangle. So you're going to grab the rectangle tool and an easy way that I can do this without having to know what the exact uh, perspective or resolution or whatever of this screen is, is I just kind of, um, I'll make 
the original corner or point of the rectangle on one of the corners of the laptop and then I'll just drag it down to where um, the bottom is touching the bottom of where the screen would be and then I just kind of go from there and um, try to just create a rectangle that's about the size of what I think it's going to be. It'll, it can change, it's fine. Um, but that'll at least give me a good perspective. So create that rectangle. Um, so now what we're going to do is we are going to go to our layers and we're going to convert that rectangle to a smart object. So go, I am right clicking on this, bringing up my options and I'm going to hit convert to smart object. Now that our rectangle is a smart object, it honestly doesn't matter what color or anything because we're going to change that. So now that our rectangle is a smart object, you come up here to the left, hit edit and hit free transform and then hit edit again transform distort and I'm going to zoom in a little bit now we're going to basically drag the corners of our rectangle to cover where it should show uh, the screen so you can see I'm just kind of dragging them to cover where uh, the overlay would be. And then I'm going to zoom in even more to make sure I didn't miss it. I can kind of tell. It, this one's a little bit harder because um, when you zoom in to see, like it would be easier if there was actually something on the screen to show you. But you can kind of see the color, the color difference right here. So I'm going to try to line that up as good as I can. And then I'm going to zoom down and again look for that color difference. If it's just an all black screen, um, then you kind of just got to do your best. And I just would eyeball these lines to try to make sure they don't look too crazy um, and out of out of line, out of perspective, I guess. Okay, so I feel like that's pretty good. And um, I'm going to hit yes. I like it. So now that our rectangle is in perspective, um, you're going to come back over and I'm going to right click again. And now I'm going to hit edit contents. What happens is Photoshop pulls up a new uh, tab with that rectangle so you're not gonna have to try to like copy and paste and make your screen grab in perspective also Photoshop automatically does it so I'm gonna paste in my screen grab that I just took and I hit control T I am resizing it um, I'm gonna resize it with just trying to make sure that my um, the bottoms of my screen don't get in if you can't do if you have for me I have a full width screen this works really better probably if you don't have a full width screen design if you have a full width screen design you might want to do um, a different option you might want to uh, use a uh, a uh, Chrome plugin. I can't remember if they're called add-ons or plugins, but I use this Chrome plugin called um, Full Page Screen Capture, and that basically creates a full. It creates an image of an entire page at once, and I have found that um, if you have a full width screen design like I do currently that this actually works better for mock-up so I'm gonna go ahead and do this so that way we can make this look right okay once you have that image screen captured or um, you just copied it depending on the uh, style website design oh I'm gonna hide this now um, but Basically, what's going to happen is you are going to take your rectangle and um, I'll show you. I'm going to go back in time and uh, show you how this works. Okay, so you take your rectangle and 
you are going to basically edit the contents of the rectangle. Go ahead and um, right click rectangle layer, your rectangle layer, and then hit um, we are going to edit contents. It's going to pull up a rectangle um, in a new tab. So basically what's happening is you are not trying, you're not going to have to uh, edit the screen grab and make that in perspective. All you're doing is editing um, the rectangle just as it is. Um, there we go. So let me go ahead and I'm going to make a copy of this. I already opened my screen grab on Photoshop. And then I'm going to go to the rectangle. It just automatically populates that rectangle into a new tab so you can just easily edit it um, without trying to do it in perspective. So what I'm doing is I'm going to make this uh, screen capture smaller to fit my rectangle and to look however I want. And you can see now that I have done the full page screen capture, I can actually make uh, the entire page fit this rectangle without showing like my browser bar or my tools on the bottom. I really don't want any of that stuff distracting the graphic itself. So that's why I switched over and did the full page screen grab. So for you, just depending on the, the way your website is designed and um, even the size of the rectangle that you're working with, you might want to alternatively use that app called Full, full Page Screen Grab. Okay, so once you have gotten the screen grab to look just right in your rectangle, you're going to hit File and Save. And what's fun is it automatically will populate over in the image where you were originally creating the distorted rectangle. So isn't that so cool? Like you just, um, you can make it look just right over here. You could, you could add text, you could add, uh, you know, anything you want over here. And it's automatically going to populate when you hit file save. The cool thing about um, doing this is that because it is a smart object, now you've essentially created a template for yourself that you don't have to create the rectangle and distort it and uh, resize it all over again. Um, if you save this as a Photoshop file, you can come back, open it, and you can edit the contents again with the same process, and it would reopen this rectangle file for you. And then you can overlay a new screen grab or do whatever it is that you want. And it would auto populate once you hit file, save and come back up in this image. So it's really cool. Now you've made a template for yourself. I can't wait to see what you create with this tutorial. And I hope you have enjoyed learning how to create a mock-up in perspective. Thanks y'all for joining.